We lift you up. Bless your name, Jesus. I think we should give the praise and worship Hallelujah. a big hand this morning. They are doing a fantastic job. And I don't know if you notice that their song is coordinated in one. You see, Holy Spirit fill this room. Holy is the Lamb. And the next one is Holy, Holy, Lord God Almighty. This is what we need. Today is a Sunday after resurrection. And we want to worship God like God is risen in us. He's no more in the tomb, but he's risen. He went on the cross and he died for you and for me. And that gave us a access. That gave us a privilege that we should not zip our mouth. But we should worship God. And we should do it in spirit and in truth. I want to read the scripture that Jesus appeared to the disciples on his third visit. He did not just appear to them, but he fed them right after the resurrection. Turn your Bibles to John 21. We read from verse 4 to 14, and we'll read alternately our responsive reading. You read one verse, I read another verse. Let us do it together. Find it. Let us read it aloud. This is the third time that Jesus appeared to his disciples after the resurrection. And he's appearing to us today. He want to feed us with his word. He want to fill us with his spirit. Here we go. Then when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. And he said unto them, Cast thy net on the right side of the ship, and he shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to pull in the multitude of fishes. And the other disciples came a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were 200 cubic, they jogged the net with the fishes. And Jesus said unto them, Bring me the fish which you have now caught. Here is the verse. And Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples thus asked who it was, because they knew it was Jesus. Let us read it, 14 and last verse together. This is now the third time that Jesus threw himself to his disciples after his resurrection from the dead. Can we read it again? This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was risen from the dead. Praise God. This time we're going to have Bishop Fagan will be coming to pray for the sick and the shut in. But just don't sit yet. We're just going to sing this song for you and for you and for me. He's praying. Let's just sing that little refrain. For you. I am praying for you. I am praying. Glory to God. For you. I am praying. I'm praying for you. You know someone that is suffering today. Just sing that song again.
Jesus. For you. Oh yes, it's the same today. I am praying. Yes, today and forever. Glory to God. I am praying. Oh yes. Yes, he can and yes, he will. Hallelujah. I am praying. I'm praying for you one more time for you. Glory to the name of Jesus. Bless his mighty name. Bless his mighty name. I am. Hallelujah, 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 yes, yes, Lord, bless his holy name, bless his holy name, my, 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 oh, yes, Jesus, for you. I have a savior who pleading in glory. The blessed, loving savior is our savior too. Yes, Lord, and his song said for you. <laughs> I am praying. I'm praying for you. So glad, Lord, for the price that you pay. Yes, Lord, and I'm so glad this morning you love your people with an everlasting love. And I'm so glad, Lord, you died for the world. <laughs> oh, yes, and you come that your people will have life and to have it more abundantly. In this troubled world, Lord, that we are living in, nations upon nation is in turmoil. But I'm so glad you've never gone on a journey. And you're right here this morning. And we, as a church, we can come to you, Lord, cooperatively. And you said, the word said, if my people, uh, <laughs> oh yes, God, oh yes, who are called by my name, my, 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 oh, we just humble yourself and pray, and God, and seek your face, then we'll know, we know, we will hear from heaven. Lord, we pray for each and every one in the audience right now that's not feeling well in body. We pray for those also that in the hospital, we pray for those might be Lord and the rehab. And also there might be some, somebody would like to be in your service right now, but they have to be at work. We pray for them also. Because the word said, men are always to pray and not to faint. We pray for those loving Lord that going through bereavement. And Lord, we pray for those who need to be saved and don't know you as yet. Oh, God, as a personal Savior. Lord, you know we are in troublesome times. And we are in perilous time, God. And even, Lord, even our young people 
Year, dear, and everywhere this morning, Lord, we pray for them. God, we pray that you will break a mighty revival at, in our hearts and help us, Lord, that we will have it on the team of our heart to reach the loss at any cost. God, you know the sacrifice it makes. And some who are right here right now not feeling well in body. Not safe. I can even reach to your house. There will be a word. And God we know there's a word in, in your house today. Touch each and every one right now. Maybe there are some folks are watching Lord in line. We pray you touch them. And so many governments here and there have some decision to make God. Help that day, the folks, Lord, people will make the right decision. We don't know how long, God, we will have this opportunity. We can worship openly. But help us, Lord, that we make use of the opportunity and also we will not take advantage of it. But we will do things wisely, search for the last at any cost. God will look to you this morning and we pray for your touch. We pray for your healing. Strengthen those. Who need to be strengthened. Encourage those Lord. Need to be encouraged. And even those that said I'm lonely. I might be sad. Oh God having no one. Lord we know. You will never. Leave your people alone. You always. Be our caretaker. And you is a guide. And you is a provider. And you is the healer. And you is the deliverer. Father, we look to you and we pray for your blessing upon each and every one today. And we pray, my God, that everything will be done in distance and in order. Not telling, Lord, when we meet in some service like this. God, no telling what you will do. But, Father, we will prepare our hearts and prepared ourselves. We look to you right now and we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Say to your neighbor, neighbor, I want you to look, I want you to look right in your neighbor's face. Sometimes we are so stush, you know, we don't know that we need one another. But, but I want you to say to your neighbor, I need you and Jesus needs you too. And I love you from the bottom of my heart. Put your hand together and give God a hand clap. Yes, hallelujah. Glory and give the moderator a hand clap and back to ministry. Praise God. Glory to God. Thank Bishop for such a beautiful prayer. You know, you know, brethren, as you sit in your seat, you can look around. And you can see all who is missing from church. Most of them would like to be here. But because of sickness, which is a very terrible thing, affect the body. Because sickness restricts you from doing what you have to do. It breaks your limitation when you are sick. So just remember Sister Ivy, Minister Fagan, Brother C in Canada, Brother Heckel, Richardson, and many, many more. Minister Reed and Sister Reed, Sister Earl, and all those people that used to be here. But because of sickness and affliction in the body. And when they heard, we as brothers and sisters in the Lord should be concerned. Because when we get hurt one day, will be concerned. You see, Paul is the one that went through a lot of problems. He said, we are troubled on every side. 
yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We're not down, but we get up back. And he go on and said, Though the outer man perish, the inner man is renewed every day. And you can see, just look at your picture what you took about 20 years ago. Look at it now. The outer man is perishing. But thank God for the inner man, which is training every day. And we just have to pray one for the other. It's James who said, For I will restore you your health, and I will heal your wound, and I will call you to be well again. So let us just sing a little song here, which we have to know that God is still in the healing business. And when you call on his name, you can feel his presence. It can eliminate all the problems. Because so much problem when you call on Jesus. We know he's there. I'm going to ask the praise and worship to start. He said Some, something in my heart, like a stream running down, made me feel so happy, as happy as can be. When I think of Jesus and what he has done for me, my soul, my soul, cry out, hallelujah. Something in my heart like a stream keep running down. It makes me feel so happy as happy as can be. But when I think of Jesus and what He has done for me, oh, something.
the king of my life and I have to praise him. There is no other king like him. He looked beyond my fault and he see my need and I need to worship him and the only way I can do it is to do it in spirit and in truth. Let me welcome all those who are watching on live stream if you are doing it for the first time. We're glad that you tune in with us. And I hope as you watch the service today, it will be a blessing. It won't be only a blessing, but you'll worship along with us. And I'm just saying this, if you don't know Jesus as your personal savior, you are living a wasteless life. A life that don't lead to a dead end. But if you know Christ as your personal savior, you can lift your hand high and say hallelujah. Anyhow. Is anyone visiting with us for the very first time or second time? Would you please stand? We are all homesters. We are so glad to have you today. We thank God that he gave you the strength. Not only the strength, he gave you the ambition. And he put it on your mind to be here to worship. You could have stayed home. But you know when you come in a corporate setting like this, and we all get together to praise God. Things can happen. So let me say those who come in Sunday after Sunday. And all the work that you're doing. And those that was here yesterday. Giving out those things to the homeless. We cannot bless you. But God Almighty will bless you in time. And I know he will bless you with long life. Strength to keep doing what you're doing for Christ. Because only what you do for Christ. That's the only thing we lost. When you're on your bed of affliction and the doctor said, you can't make it. You can look back and you say, I have done a good job. You can say, like, I have fight a good fight. And I have finished my course. And beside that, I have kept the faith. And I know for sure there's a crown awaiting me. What a glorious thing that you can say when you're taking your last breath. Look back over your life. No confusion. Everything is peace. And you can say, peace, perfect peace. In this dark world of sin, the blood of Jesus whispered, peace within. Peace in your wall. 
We're just glad to have you today. In Jesus' precious name we pray. At this time, I'm going to ask this evangelist Robinson Parker, will you please come and do the notice for us, please. We praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God has been good to us. Very good. Look where we are. We woke up this morning in our right mind. And we are clothed in such clothing. And we are here in the house of the Lord. First, I'd like to apologize for the absence of the secretary, Sister Millie. She's not here at the moment. So just continue to keep her in prayer. Amen. And I want you to all listen intensely to these notices. They're very important. And if by chance you do not hear or understand, please see the secretary or the, the bulletin board. You can check it at any time, okay? You know, we say, for you I am praying. Hallelujah. For you I am praying. Oh, yeah. Be careful how we use these words to people. If you say, for you I'm praying. If I'm saying praying for Sister Clark, make sure, make sure, glory to God, I am praying for Sister Clark when I said it to her. Praise the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. You know, God is so good. Oh, glory to God. You know, through it all, through it all, I, Sister Jean, can say, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to depend upon him. And I know he is a way maker. And it's a breakthrough. Glory to God. God, he said, what is your purpose today? Think of the question. What is your purpose? Your purpose. Think of it. Yes. How are you going to be fulfill, fulfilling your purpose? Praise God. Okay. Announcement. Sunday school. 10 a.m. every Sunday morning, rain or shine. Sunday school. Fasting and prayer, 10 a.m. every Monday, rain or shine. The last Friday of every month at 10 a.m. is corporate prayer and fasting at church. And if by any chance impossible you can make it, try and make it here. Bible study, 7.30 p.m. every Wednesday night. That's what it says here. Okay, try and make that as well. On the last Wednesdays of every month, the last Wednesdays of every month, there will be midweek worship and testimony service. Okay, that should be a great opportunity for new members, for whole members, for everyone to testify of the goodness of God and what he has done for you. Okay, April 18th, listen to these dates, 18 to the 21st, annual general convention. Annual convention. Our bishop is asking every member that owns a title whether you're missionary, whether you're deacon, deaconess, evangelist, usher, men's president, ladies president, whatever title you hold, uh, your fee is $100, one zero zero dollars And God. all other members will be $50, five zero. And that's coming from the bishop. We all got that? Yes. And the theme for the convention is, the time has come for true worshiper, true worshiper, to worship the Father in the spirit and truth. And it's taken from St. John 4, verse 23. And the speaker will be Bishop Hardy, H-A-R-D-Y. We had him last year. May 18th at 8 a.m is our private breakfast. And the theme is commitment. And with the private breakfast, we have the tickets on sale, okay? The tickets are on sale and they're $30, three zero. Private breakfast, May 18th at 8 a.m. And the theme is commitment. Proverbs 16, three, love offering of $30. Please see missionary call. Missionary Cole, can you please stand in case nobody knows who you are? Bless the Lord. Missionary Green, is she here? No, she's not here in our absence. Um, and we're asking you, and they're the one that have the ticket. She was there yesterday. We were very, very busy on the 
missionary field. July 27 will be our annual church picnic at T.Y. Park. We will give more information when it comes available. And that's a great place to go and just feel free and enjoy life. And God has blessed us that we're able to do it. So try and enjoy your life as you can. Praise the Lord. And April 13 is members meeting is planned. Okay? Any change, you'll hear it from the bishop. Members meeting on April 18. And this is from the missionary department announcement. Matthew 25, 35 to 40. And from the New English International Version, verse 35. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Did you invite anybody in? I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you look after me. I was in prison, and you came to see me. And we have Care Packages Day. The hospitality team, as it is called, for the missionary department will be sponsoring another community project. This time, they are asking for us all support the venture with hygiene items. Hygiene, things that are easily used. And when you go out there, you pass them driving in your cars with your windows up, and these people are on the streets. But when you get near to them, it's God and his mercies. And as a missionary, glory to God, and children of God, you do not put your nose up at anyone. You hug them, you try the best, and God will take care of you. Infection, yes, but you have to be present with the Lord. Pray yourself up before you go on the missionary field. It's not an easy journey, and it's not an easy work. Because you see, young people, and when I'm saying young people, young, one of the young people I met yesterday was from this church, grew up, graduated from college, with degrees, and on the street, and look homeless. Did you hear what I said? Homeless, filthy looking, but the grace of God, right? So you can see Sister Amy, Sister Jean, Sister Maxine, Sister Desiree, Sister Gold, and any of the ministers, and whatever God has blessed you financially, you know, you give the packages, care packages. What does care packages consist of? Toothpaste, toothbrush, sanitary items, panties, briefs, anything that you can think of, water, lots of water, because they're out there thirsty. We went into this tent yesterday, this guy as an amputee, one of his legs amputated, if you see the condition. And only what, I mean, it was like 100 degrees in there. I went in there, so I'm telling you. I didn't stand out and look. I went in there, and it was terrible. Wash rags, soap, pericare, you know, lotion, anything, comb, brushes, whatever. And then we give them, not only did we give them those type of sanitaries and cleansing things, but we also gave them little cookies and things. You know, it wasn't feeding time, but we also put that into the package and the cold water, which they wanted so much. And uh, while I'm standing here, I still have some more notices, but I would like to give credit and honor to one of our brethren, and I'm telling you, and it's Deacon Cedric Wright that drive the church bus. I am telling you. I, Sister Jean, okay, I tell you, I walk across the train track. Oh, glory to God. I mean, it was rocky, and everybody was worried for Sister Jean that I'm going to fall down. But the grace of God that keeps you, and when you're not doing things of self, when you're doing it by God, and God is in your life, yeah. he will hold you up and protect you. But I'm telling you, that gentleman knows every quiver, every crack. Nowhere to find everyone. You know, I saw this young, old man laying on a mattress. Oh my God, just laying there in the sun in the mattress. So many things, brethren. And I'm just saying, as missionary, as members of the church, whatever your title are, if you find it possible to just go and minister to someone, it's not just handing them the package to let them eat and drink, but it's holding their hands, knowing someone care. 
because if it was not for the goodness of God, many of us here today would have gone on a long time. But because of the grace of God that has kept us and the enemy would have destroyed us. But thanks be to God, we are here. So when you're looking on your brothers and sisters, when you're driving across the street, don't worry, you give them a dollar. If they take and do the drugs, that after them. But you yourself, feel at peace. If I can help someone along the way of life, then my living will not be in vain. You know, and sometimes you see people prospering. You wonder how they're prospering. The grace of God, man. So we need to know what is your purpose? Why am I here? Why am I in Berean Church? I could have gone anywhere, but God has called me and has kept me here for a purpose. And we need to find our purpose. And when we say love, we need to love our brothers and sisters and help them along, cuddle them gently. Somebody walk with me. Somebody pray for me when I couldn't pray for myself. And we all need to remember that. Okay, here we are. We have new, listen carefully now, new offering envelopes. And on the offering envelopes, it says your name, which is Jean, the first name. The last name would be Park or whatever I need to put there. Tides amount. Sister Jean is going to give $1,000 in tides. It says offering. Out of that tides of the $1,000, am I going to give 500 for offering? Am I going to give special offering of $25? Am I going to give missionary offering of $50? Convention amount, it's all there. Read, ladies and gentlemen, child, young girls, boys, ministers, everybody, it's there. You can write one check and you just write what the others, your, what that check is for. Understand? Sure? I want it to be specific today. That when you write that check and put it in the sand, you tell us what it is. How much is your offering? Because the offering is different from the tithes. And how much is your missionary? How much is for the convention? Special offering? What is special offering? Anything you want, you know, like we have GoFunds, uh, Hurricane, and all those things. So that is it. And this is the offering. And if you don't, you ask the ushers for one. If you need a pen, somebody will have a pen. You ask Sister Jean, she always have a lot. And you can write it. Amen? Okay. I told you about all members and the ladies meeting. Ladies meeting. The ladies president is right there. Please stand, ladies president. Okay. And Saturday at 7.30 is the meeting. Please try and make yourself available and for that meeting. And I just have something. We collected, the uh, missionary department collected, as you know, Sister Amy is the president, and all of us work with her. And um, they collected money for, you all know about GoFund, right? And she was collecting many. I don't know if many of you know Dr. Um, Minister God Bless, uh, the child that is very, very sick. And we collected the money, and um, it was sent to to minister God bless and to it was a go fund and this is the response that we got to the Berean family being a giver all my life I've never think the day would come when I have to ask for something and that can happen to any one of us I have to ask for something which is the hardest thing to do but thanks be to God he has blessed us with the people like you who see the need and did not hesitate to attend onto it. What a blessing it is to have people like you in our lives. This world, and to know true kingdom warriors, loving and caring are still around. There's not enough words to express our sincere gratitude, but thank you, thank you, and thank you. The Lord bless you, your family, and your ministry richly. Pastor Bennett from the Go Fund for who is Minister, God bless. And you know, may the Lord bless you all. And I'm John Gessa. I was on the mission field yesterday. That's something that we used to do years ago. Sister Victor and all of them used to go downtown and feed um, the homeless, and she used to do pretty ministry. But there's no blessing you can get until you go down into the gutter with those people. Then you get to realize, oh, God has blessed you. And the things that we worry about. The things that concern us and consume us is nothing at all 
until you can say, thanks be to God that giveth me the victory and reach you. Revive us again. Ask the Lord to revive us. That you just don't hand a package to somebody. You're able to hold their hand and pray with them. Oh, glory to God. And when somebody can turn to you and say to you, thank you, God bless you. I needed that. You go home feeling richer than the zero zeros in the bank because you're going to die and leave those zero zeros in the bank. As good as you are, as good as you are, you're not going to take those zeros with you. So if you can help some brother along the way of life, if you cannot go, you pray. And yesterday, I have to say it before I leave this restroom, I was on the bus and I said, I think I said it to Sister Desiree or... Um, I think I remember our sister, maybe I said, my God, I remember our sisters that used to sit out there. They couldn't go on the bus to go, but they sat there and pray for us while we were on the mission field. They stayed in the church and prayed and prayed and prayed for us. And they're gone home to rest and may they find the rest. But may we still find people. If you cannot go, you can't climb the bus. You can still come, sit in the church, and while we're out there in the mission field. It's a rough journey, but it's a journey that we all need to take. May the Lord bless you as you continue. And just remember, right? He is the God of breakthrough. And he says, I will crush disappointment. And anything you're disappointed with, God will crush you. He's the God of the breakthrough. You pray my strength, God, my desire, my determination is to make heaven my home. The Lord bless you all. Have a wonderful time. Enjoy the service. Praise the Lord. Give, this, give Evangelist Park a big, big hand for doing the um, notice so forcefully and so plainly that we can really understand that. And I just want to salute Deacon Wright for the work that he's doing and for the missionary department and for the ladies department and everyone that's doing the work for the Lord. Um, remember now, next week Sunday at 7 p.m. in the afternoon is a members meeting. I know when we call members meeting, we only have a few here. And when the members meeting is over, everybody want to know what was discussed. If you know what we're going to discuss in the members meeting, please make it a sacrifice and be here. We cannot have a members meeting unless we have a quorum. So we're going to let church over very early next Sunday. Give us as much time to go home, have our meal, and come back to members' meeting. And come with something that you want to say to the church. Something that will edify the church. And let me say this. I'm going to ask each and everyone to stay back for just a few minutes. I know it's a long day. I know we have communion Sunday. But what is to discuss must be discussed. And it must be done with the virgin. So please, whenever we give, we're not going to give the benediction. We're going to ask you just to sit back for about five or ten minutes. And then we can talk together. Because it's all towards the glory of the Lord. And again, remember to support the prayer breakfast, which is coming, in, coming up on the 18th of May. And I understand that it starts at 8 a.m. in the morning. So try to support the lady's president because she need your help. Bless the name of Jesus. We are about to collect today's tithe and offering. Will you stand with me? Let us pray and we're going to continue with the song. I'm going to ask the hush up, please to direct everyone to where they're supposed to put their offering. One bucket is over that side and another one and this is the go fund box. So we got to know the difference. Three places. Go fund box, offering over there on tides, offering over there on tides. Please direct the bridge that they can do it in a proper way. Stand with me, please. Father God, I stretch my hands to thee. There is no other help we know, Lord. If you will draw yourself from us, then where shall we go? We thank you for everyone that came out today God and we even thank you for those that cannot make it here but they are listening and they want to be here and they cannot be here and God as you bless them with something that they can bless the work of Christ we ask in turn that you bless them with good health 
Bless their family. Bless them with strength and energy, God. And bless the funds that we collect that it will stretch. Knowing, Lord, that we're even doing the roof right there. And it takes some funds to do that roof. But God, thank you for providing it for us. Thank you, Lord, for keep them in good health. And keep that job going, God. Sometimes it's rough on the job. And they could keep it all for themselves. But because you shine the light in their hearts and in their mind, they decide to bring back a portion of what you bless them with into the house of the Lord. So we thank you, God, for them. Sanctify it right now and bless it as we tell you thanks in Jesus' precious name. We're going to sing this little song. Jesus, all I need, all I need. Jesus Christ is made for me. All I need, all I need. Wisdom, righteousness, and power. Holiness forevermore. His contempt and serve for me. All I need.
at the sign, say, what do you need? Bless the Lord. Wisdom, righteousness, and power. Hallelujah. That's all you need. Yes, at this time, we're going to ask Minister Woodstock, I don't know if you have a mic there, to pray for the preacher and to introduce the preacher. Minister Woodstock, please. Bless the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise his holy name. We are his holy name. We are now at a pivotal point in our service where we hear thus saith the Lord. We're all here this afternoon for a special purpose and there is a word that the Lord wants to impress upon all of us while why we are here this afternoon. So with no further ado, let us just Lift our hearts, our minds, and our entire being out of the natural and into the spiritual as we access the throne of Almighty God. My Heavenly Father and loving Lord, how much of a privilege it is that I can come before your presence without any guilt or shame knowing that you are my father you are our father we just gloriously sang the song of praise that our redemption is sure and it's only because of your goodness your love and your mercy where you have entered into your creation to redeem us and reconcile us by the blood of Jesus Christ so we praise your name in this sanctuary this afternoon we exalt your name this afternoon we lift up your name this afternoon I must disagree with the songwriter that says lift Jesus higher because we can only lift Jesus to the highest and we lift the name of Jesus higher and higher this afternoon to the highest oh God because you are worthy to be praised so right now father as you have inspired your son minister Lambert Lee who you have called for a time such as this on assignment for this day the seventh day of April to impart a word oh God of upliftment a word of edification a word of admonition a word of strength a word of deliverance and a word of salvation to your people this afternoon we pray right now oh god as a church in one in faith oh god that the holy spirit of the lord will overshadow him right now oh god endow him with a power that this church has never seen before oh god let your spirit take preeminence in this sanctuary oh god we put oh god every opposing spirit 
spirit, O oh God, every contrary thought, O oh God, under subjection right now, O oh God. And we call every heart and every mind this afternoon into the obedience of Christ. We pray that preaching will be easy. The word will go forth, O oh God. God as you have desired it to be and I pray Father God that souls will be encouraged souls will be delivered and souls will be saved to the glory and the honor of Jesus Christ we look to you by faith to this afternoon Father and we call it done by faith and we as a congregation say amen, amen, amen. While you're still standing, I will present Minister Lambert Lee. He needs no introduction. I can only present him. He's one of our own. And he has been a very significant he has played a very significant role in my very presence here before you at this podium. So I take great honor and great pleasure to pre present to the Berean Church of God, Minister Lambert Lee. Receive him, receive him, receive him in the care of the Holy Ghost.
name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Team. Thank you, musicians. You may be seated in the presence of the Almighty God. I want to greet my worthy bishop, Bishop Joseph Fagan, his wife in her absence, Bishop Paul and his wife in their absence, Minister Clark, Missionary Patricia Clark. Minister Woodstock, who have done such a powerful prayer. All the officers and bridging of this great church, all our visitors, musicians, technical staff, I want to greet you today in the mighty name of Jesus. God is good. God is good. Do you believe that church? I say, God is good. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. He's not in the grave. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. This morning is not in the grave. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. He is alive and well. And because he lives, you and I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fears are gone because I know, yes, I know that he holds a future. And as a result of that, our lives are worth a living just because he's no longer in the grave. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to read this morning from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6. The Gospel according to St. John, chapter 6. And we are going to look at the 47th to the 50th. To the 58th verse. And it reads thus Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven. That a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my father's, is, is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How oh, can this man give us his flesh to eat? <laughs> and Jesus said unto them, Truly, truly, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood at eternal life, and I will raise him up of the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and high in him. As a living father has sent me and I live by the father so he that he me 
even he shall live it by me. 58 and law. This is that bread which came down from heaven. Not as your father did eat manner and are dead. Ye that eateth of this bread, eateth of this bread, <laughs> shall live forever. The theme I want to use to occupy your mind, and I won't be long, because we're going to talk to the church after, after the communion for a few minutes. The theme I want to use to occupy our mind is Jesus Christ is the bread of life. Simple. Can't go wrong. Can't go any plainer than that. Jesus Christ is the bread of life. Today in the Berean Church of God is observed as Communion Sunday where we serve the Lord's Supper. And for those of you who are member of this ministry, one of our belief is that we believe in the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I don't think any member is in here who don't or will not adhere to that fact. Because it's stated as part of our bylaws. That we as a body, we believe in such. I want to make it clear today that Jesus Christ instituted two very important ordinances. Two. Very important ordinances. Not going to be long, so just stay with me for a few. The first one is baptism. The second one is the Lord's Supper. Or we call it communion. But these two ordinances was instituted by Jesus Christ. And somebody might say, preacher, teacher, what do you mean by the word ordinances? The word ordinances mean an authoritative command. Which means it's something coming from the municipal, from the government, the head of a fear to the church. Therefore, if it's a command, we must adhere to it. Are you with me, church? It's kind of like your married vow. Huh? Can I say that and I'm, I'm okay with saying that? Even though Bishop, it was how long? How long you married? 53 years. Every so often on that day, that date, Bishop still commemorate, maybe even give his wife a rose, even though she's sick. She may not look the way she was on the day when they walked down the aisle. Come on, church of God. But just to show that 
baby, we are still on. E, come on, church of God, I'm fighting a demon in here. He still have to do that. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Even though she don't look as how, oh, 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 she was on that day, but he want to let her know that we are still in this thing together. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. So if you are in church and you can't take communion and you are a Christian, it's like you divorce. Come on, church, somebody talk to me. It's like you divorce Jesus Christ. Am I going? To, uh, 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 am I on point there? Hmm? So let's talk about these two ordinances. Number one, baptism is an ordinance that is only observed once by each person as a sign of the beginning of his or her Christian life. Once, you can underline that word, once. It's a sign of a beginning. But look what communion our Lord Supper means. It's an ordinance that is to be observed repeatedly throughout the Christian life as a sign of continuing in fellowship with Jesus Christ. That's why Paul had us to tell the church, as often as you do this, you still show the Lord's death till he come. The significance of the Lord's Supper is understood in several ways. But today we are drawing our attention to just three ways. One, the proclamation of the Lord's death. Two, it unites the believers in a common faith in Jesus. Number three, which is most importantly, the Lord's Supper is an occasion for remembrance. Because we easy to forget, you know. Huh? When we participate in the Lord's Supper, we symbolize the death of Christ. The emblem which represents the bread symbolizing the breaking of Christ's body. And the cup that we sip symbolizes his blood that was poured out on the all rugged cross. This is why participating in the Lord's Supper is also a kind of proclamation. Yes, you don't have to be up here preaching to proclaim the word. When you take the Lord's Supper, it's a form of proclamation. Because as often as you do this, come on church of God, you do show the Lord's death till he come. So you see the reference I made there with Bishop was very important. As often as he did that, ever so often, say call it every year and on our, our anniversary, we do show our spouses that we are still in this together. Amen? 
So this is uh, one of the important things about the communion. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Paul declared First Corinthians eleven twenty six. For as we you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he come. When we take the communion, we give a symbol of the fact that we participate or in share in the benefit earned for us by his death, of, by the death of Jesus Christ. You see, sometimes we want to enjoy the benefit, Sister Jean. But we don't want to participate, you know. We want to be to benefit from the, the power of the resurrection. We shout how much the resurrection give power. The resurrection give deliverance. The resurrection give breakthrough, but we don't want to participate in the suffering. Let me just divert a little further. Paul was on a boat, and there was shipwreck, a boat wreck, and it was cold. And they landed on an island called Malta. Come on, church of God. And they said, we need to make a fire to get warm. Now, Paul, as the head of the team, he said, since I want to enjoy the benefit of the warmth, might as well I go out and help look the hood. Come on, church of God. Some of us want to enjoy the blessings in the church, but we don't want to sweat. We don't want to participate in the effort. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. So when Paul went out to gather the stick, there was a viper. But because he was in the will of God, doing the things of God, he just brushed it off. Yes. Come on, church. When we are doing God's will and the enemy come upon us, can I say that again? Can I say that again? Yes. Even though it was a deadly viper that stung him. For many people, it would be dead. Yes. But because he was doing business for the king. Yes. Come on, church of God. What was meant for death? Paul just swept it away. Yes. Come on, church. That's why so many times we get beat up by the headwinds. Because we're doing our own little thing. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. When we should be doing things of God. Come on, church. But if we want to enjoy the glory of God, we have to be partaker of his suffering. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free. There's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. We got to bear something. As long as we are living on this earth, we're going to bear something. Oh, bless the Lord. If you suffer with him, you will reign with him. Come on, church. Some 
time we get a little bit when things go away and we complain and we murmur. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. We murmur and complain. But we got to stand in the gap. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. We got to be partaker. And one of the way of being partaker is what we are about to exercise. Is by taking communion. Because what we are saying is that Lord. We are in this thing with you. Oh bless the name of the Lord. The text I read this morning. From the gospel of St. John. Most of the time we are doing communion. We read from the gospels. But I chose John this morning. Jesus was in Capernaum. The day before, he just did, he did a very grave miracle. He feed over 5,000 people, Bishop. And you know once he did something like that, people are going to come around. But I noticed something about Jesus' ministry. That everywhere he go, there's always an opposing force. Even today in the church. Once the anointing of God is on your life. Expect opposition. It doesn't matter what Jesus do. There was somebody to point out something that wasn't right. Minister Clark, no matter what you do in the church, somebody gonna find some problem because there are some people in the church, their assignment is to disrupt. On church of God. They're not seeing the great feeding that took place last week and the great stuff that you guys went out there. I was down there a few weeks ago and when I see Deacon Wright take us through some crevices I say oh my God we know people here to hand out food. And it doesn't matter what you do. There are folks that come into church with an agenda to disrupt, to tear down. So there were this group of people looking for Jesus. <laughs> I heard a preacher preach some years ago. He said when Jesus born, there were two group of people looking for Jesus. The three wise men. And Herod. I don't know who which side you're on. But some people are looking to worship. While some people they are looking to destroy. So Jesus who is omnipotent who can read your mind <laughs> you, you, you know people come into church but them still don't understand all this Holy Ghost thing working you know. they believe when they sit in their little conference room and plot a against God's anointing 
the trap that they set for an anointed man of God. They themselves gonna get caught in that snare. So these Jewish people, they were trying to get Jesus, Evangelist Victor. Time up. And so they said, Master, we've been looking for you. <laughs> We are so concerned when we looked down there and didn't see you. We were so concerned. Uh, hypocrites. Hi, 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 hi. But Jesus knew why they were searching for him. Huh? But you know what I like about Jesus? He is a master teacher because he was teaching in the temple. And he's a master teacher. And what I like about him, he teaches beyond word can ever. That's the Jesus we serve. He preaches, he teaches beyond philosophy. Because philosophy have a limit. Huh? And that's what makes Christianity a little different from all religion. And so, Jesus said, You, you want to see me not because. You saw the miracle that I've done. But because you eat of the loaves and you were filled. You see, that's why we have to get to the point. One of the things that I love about the gospel, there's an era in the gospel where you have to defend it. And that's where Christian need to be. You gotta be a place in God where you know the word so you can defend it. Stand up for what you believe, that's what I mean. Because Christ already died, so. So Jesus said to them, labor not for the meat that perishes, but for the meat that endure into eternal life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, because he alone, God the Father of seal. I'm pretty sure these Jewish leaders did not like something like that, Minister Clark. Because they didn't believe he was the Messiah. But Jesus took it a little further. Now, to show you how much they despise Jesus, with that miracle he had done the day before by feeding over 5,000, you know what those grateful people said? You are not as great. As our forefather Moses. In the wilderness. Because you just feed 5,000. Moses feed the entire Jewish nation. In the wilderness. And what you did was use food that I already given to you and multiply it. But Moses called on food from heaven. Come on, church of God. 
They try to back up Jesus in a spot. Sometimes some people like to do that to you, to try to expose you. But Jesus looked to them and said, Moses and all those people dead in the wilderness. <laughs> Jesus said, the food that I will give you, you will live forever. In fact, he took it a little further. He said, I am the bread of life. Come on, church of God. If you eat of me, you will not hunger. You see, they, they, they were scoffing and start to say, this man is rude. They were trying to say we must eat of his flesh. But what Jesus was doing, he was trying to elevate their, their spiritual mind. Jesus was getting into the fact that man is a tripart being, which is composed of spirit, soul, and body. The food that Moses gave only satisfied the physical man. But the food that I will give will satisfy the spirit and the soul. Come on, church. So labor not for food that only... You see, that's what some Christians only concern about ego. Just temporary things. Works. But what Jesus was getting into is that the food I'm about to present to you, it is nourishment for the soul. Because just as your body need, the physical body need food, your spiritual body also need food. That's why if you take the body of the, and the blood and worthily for this cause what did the Bible say many are weak and sick so bridging as we open up our minds and our soul to communion, let us understand that this is to show, it's as one of my thing characteristic of it is a remembrance, is to show, to keep it. One of the worst thing is when, you know, somebody do something for you very important and by tomorrow you forgot it. Come on church, we owe a debt. How happy we would feel if we get a phone call and a rich man said, hey, I just pay off your mortgage. Come on, church of God. How would you feel? Don't you feel good? You get a call that I am from Chase Bank, the CEO. I realize that you owe $300,000 for market. I just pay it off. How would you feel? Huh? And two weeks ago, you lost the little job you, you were doing. Come on, church. And you got a call that your debt is canceled. Well, we owe a debt that we could not pay. And Christ pay a debt that he did not owe.
So as Christians, we must have the right attitude when we approach the Lord's table. I'm closing. It's not just, oh, but it's first Sunday. Ah, oh, communion again. Come on, church. It's not about burying church and communion. We are talking about the sacrifice that was done on a hill far away. Stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. It was on that old cross, our dear Lord stretched out. They spit on him. They nail him to the cross. And in the end he said, forgive them, Lord. My God, my God. Only Jesus Christ could have done something like that. Your mother would not do that for you. Stand with me this morning. Let us worship the Lord in the house. He's worthy this morning. He's worthy to be prayed. I said, Jesus Christ is the bread of life. He's the bread of life. He's the bread of life. He's the bread of life. As often as you eat, and as often as you do drink this cup, you do show the Lord's debts. Until he comes. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. What are we doing? What are we doing for Jesus? Are we cherishing that old rugged cross? Because one of this day, there's going to be an exchange. No cross, no crown. so you can testify about that. In the week, you were in an accident and your car right off. Or a new car. 
right off. But today she's in the house Hallelujah. rejoicing in a full and free salvation because David declared that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It did not say that if you come to church, Minister Clark, I'm closing. You shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. It did not say that if you are the bishop of the church, you shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. But the word said, He that dwelleth in the secret place, there is a place in God where the devil cannot go. I will cherish of the cross the cross give healing there are many of us today if it had not been for the cross some of us the doctor gave us over a long time ago but had it not been for the cross we will be wiped off this earth Microphone back to my dear beloved minister. But I feel led to pray for somebody. If you are dear and you have not yet picked up your cross, because you hear the many benefits we talk about the cross. No cross, no crown. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Because for you to get that crown, there got to be an exchange. Come on, church. You got to exchange something for that crown. And that is that cross. So if you're here today, or if you're listening, you can make an altar wherever you are. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. You can, if you are here today, I'm just going to invite you to come down here. We want to pray with you.
will perish. The whole rugged cross. Sister Susan, come join your mother down there. The word of the Lord declare that the family that prays together stays together. Yes, come on, brother. When the devil is coming up against you, is coming up against your house. Your house is not your building. Your house is anything from your loin. Come on, church of God. My house is my wife and my children. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. So when the devil is coming up against me, he's not just coming against me alone. He's coming from a household. Come on, church of God. Come on, work with me here. I have an assignment here and I come on church we are about to take the communion but we have to do God's business because the song man said I came on business for the king oh bless the name of the Lord but as a church today we are gonna cancel Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We're going to cancel some assignments in the heavenly. Come on, church of God. Are you with me this morning? Are you with me this morning? We're going to be the blood of Jesus against some forces of darkness that is operating in the heavens. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. This is God's church. And the church of power. Power to save. Power to heal. Power to destroy. Power to disrupt ever forces of darkness. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your people, God. Mighty God, we thank you for these who see it fit to walk up to this altar this afternoon. Many of them they came for different reasons. Some are already saved. Some are feeling sick. Some are getting a little depressed. Some has lost the joy they had. And some did not even love you, Jesus. But this morning, as afternoon as we come, we come because we know that there is power in the blood of the lamb and Jesus declare that I am the bread and if you eat of me you will not hunger I pray that as these blessed soul walk to this altar they will not leave the way they came I pray, mighty God, that you will lay your hands upon them, mighty God. And you will touch them from the crown of their head to the very sole of their feet. Mighty God, whatever the situation is, God. I pray that you will comfort them. I pray that you will build a fence around them, God. I come against every ism. I come against every schism. I come against every forces of darkness. In the name of Jesus. I come against every assignment that is over some of these loved ones' lives. I bind up generation curse. Yes. In the name of Jesus. We put our foot on that serpent this afternoon. 
You don't have to be like your four parents. You don't have to go through what your four parents have been through. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare victory today over the lives of these people. I pray that they will deliver, set free from the bandages, from the baggages, from every car that bind them up. I declare that they lose today in the name of Jesus. Deliver and set free so that they can worship you in the beauty of holiness. So that their heart will be at peace. That today when they take off your body and drink of that cup, it will revive them. It will bring deliverance, not only in their lives, but in their family life, in their wayward children life, wherever they are. Mighty God, some of their children and grandchildren, they're all over the place. But God, we send out mighty God. Uh -oh. We send out right now. A warrant right now. Wherever those children are right now. And we bring them back to their mind right now. Bring them back to consciousness. Let them come to the realization. That you'd stretch out on the cross for them. Have your way now we pray. We commit them into your hands. And we ask your blessing upon them. And your protection upon them. Heal them and deliver them right now. God, we pray for that child. We come against drowning right now. In the name of Jesus. We plead the blood right now. Against the forces of darkness. And as a church, we agree and we believe. And we said victory in Jesus. My Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the blood. Come and raise those hands and give God thanks for the blood. What can wash the way? Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. We're going to go into another session. God bless you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your patience. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is good. We're about to serve supper. Just be patient with us. Sometimes it gets a little lengthy, but just bear with us. God bless you, Minister Clark, in care of the Holy Ghost. going to get out of here soon, so don't worry. Time spent with the Lord is time well spent. Those were some powerful words from Minister Lee. Let's give him a big, big hand for that. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise God. We just want to follow the same spirit that is leading us. And I have song, but I don't want to go to a new song. Just sing that same rugged cross song. When the spirit is leading, we don't want to change anything. But I'm going to make it very quick that we can get into this meeting that we're going to have. Not that I'm cutting the communion short, but you have to be wise in whatever you do. And I know people are here from morning, um, older people and they have to have a meal. But Minister Lee, thank you for those powerful words. God bless you. Just keep on preaching. You're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it for us and you're doing it for the Lord.
Bishop Fagan is going to pray for the bread and the wine. Put your heads down. Father, how much we thank you, Lord, for your greatness. And we thank you for your love. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this bread. Thank you, Jesus. This is an emblem. And we thank you, Lord, for the wine, which is the blood. Yes, Lord. That's institute from your body. Mm -hmm. And right now, Lord, as we are about to partake of this bread and this wine, God, we pray you will change it. Help, Lord, that it will be a blessing into our bodies. So we dedicate this bread now and we dedicate the wine in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We say thanks. In Praise Jesus. God. Praise See what happened when you forsake the table of the Lord and when you go on your knees to pray and ask for forgiveness. What are you going to say to the Lord? You, for, you reject the very ordinance that he tells you to do and then you still pray. But we cannot do that. You say as often as you do this, you do remember what the Lord did for you and you remember where you was and what you used to do before God touches you. Sometimes it was very close to get shot because we were at the wrong place. But God touched us. Turn our life around. How can you forget? Praise God. I'm just going to sing this little refrain which we have never sung for a while. If, if you only know the blessing that salvation brings, you will never stay away. If you only know the blessing that salvation brings, you assemble and you are saved you are welcome to take the communion with us I'm going to ask the deacon to serve those who cannot move by themselves first and then after that I'm going to invite you all to come to the communion table with boldness and with gladness uh, this is the blood that Jesus shed for you way back and Calvary. Thy life was given for me. 
Thy blood, O Lord, was shed. Everybody serve. Everyone serve. Songs in my life was given for thee. And what have I given to you? Just hold up. Let the devil see that you are taking his body of Jesus. We are not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God unto salvation. For I receive from the Lord that I also pass unto you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that was broken for you. As often as you eat it, you do remember the death until he comes. Let us all eat to the glory of God. Praise the Lord. Oh, let my life be given in years, in sickness, and in death.
same manner he took the cup. Everyone serve now? I never realized that some never serve. I asked a question. In the same manner, he took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink this cup and eat this bread, you do show the Lord's death until he come. Let us all drink to the glory of God. My hope is built on nothing else than Jesus Christ and righteousness. I dare not trust his sweetest name, but only hope on Jesus Christ. And Christ is solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. We're going to sing that and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Mm -hmm. 